folks, welcome back. We're going to call this one a shocking episode of Whining About Pest Control. I am Shell Hartzer of 360 Pest Consulting, and today is a little different. I was scanning through my social media this morning, as I typically do, and came across this. Yeah. So today, we're going to whine about tall tales. Not just the folklore misconceptions and errors, but using that as your marketing material. So in honor of twisted up misinformation, I am drinking twisted red wine blend. Cheers. Mm. Very nice balance. Where do we start with this? I usually start with some background, so let's see what we can do with that. There really are a ton of myths and misconceptions about insects and about insects. I remember in college, somebody said that praying mantises were protected by law and you could not kill them. There's also the one that I heard when I was little, that daddy long legs are the most venomous spider in the whole world, but they can't bite you because their fangs are too small. There's lots of other ones, so comment below with what your favorite one is. All right, let's wind on earwigs. These are pretty cool soil dwelling insects. Other common names for these include pincher bug, my current favorite, Little Scissors, um, but Battle Twig is also pretty cool. I'll let you folks look up what they're called in Japan. There are about 27 species in the United States. These are mostly nocturnal and need damp, moist conditions. They can occasionally become a garden pest, but they don't cause any structural damage. Nor, let me say this very, very clearly, they cannot pinch people. Those little pinchers on the end of their abdomen are just for grabbing stuff, not people. Also, they do not crawl in people's ears at night and lay eggs that eat their brain. No. I need a lot more wine for this one. On to whining about control. These are going to be found mostly in the summer, and since they are little vegetarians, they're often in the soil. They're around plants, under mulched areas, with all that decaying vegetation. When they do get into structures, it's totally accidentally. There is nothing inside that they really want. So they can fly, but they usually don't. Finding those ground floor entry points, sealing those up can do a lot to keep earwigs and other wandering little insects out of your structure. Some of you are saying, but Shell, the customers are rationally afraid of these. What can we do? Great question. Thanks for asking. My recommendation here is doing a crack and crevice around doors, ground floor windows, and other low entry points so that if the earwig makes it that far, they get knocked down at that point. There's really no reason to do more than that. Even that perimeter treatment isn't that great because these insects are underneath the soil, underneath the vegetation, so it's not going to penetrate enough to get to them. That simple pin stream application around those key points is really going to give you the best results for these. There's some educational sites that suggest you can make a little trap out of like a tin can and some oil, so feel free to tell your customers to go look that one up. There's also whining about misinformation. I'm going to leave it at this. Earwigs cannot use their pinchers to harm people. Be responsible with your marketing material. Don't fear monger. That's all I'm going to whine about today. There is much, much more. So have a glass, bust some myths, and you can always whine to me about your tough pest challenges. Helpful information down below. Share with all your friends and family. Hit all of those social media buttons because we've got plenty more great whining that you don't want to miss. And until next time, Cheers to bad marketing and earwigs. Mm -hmm.